recently, the idea of taxing one of the biggest sources of carbon emissions, plastic, has become popular. Imagine paying six cents for each plastic bag you need when you shop. This is what New York's Mayor Michael Bloomberg proposed in November. Some New Yorkers don't like the idea. It's ridiculous. <laughs> six cents a bag for a bag it should be free. That's not a good idea. Sounds kind of crazy. I know they do a lot of things to save the earth and protect it, recycling, stuff like that, but I don't think that the economy should try and make money off of that. Others do. They say plastic bags are not only non-biodegradable, they're an eyesore. That's totally going to work, absolutely, because everyone's like, ew, plastic. I swim in the ocean and I don't want to see plastic bags in there, you know. I think it's a good idea to make the um, consumer more aware that they're creating waste and, you know, extra junk we don't need. I think it might encourage more people to use bags like these that are over and over again, because I don't see people doing it as much as I thought I would. It was Nobel laureate and former Vice President Al Gore's documentary, An Inconvenient Truth, that challenged the American people to produce all of America's energy from renewable and carbon-free sources within the next 10 years. Is it possible that we should prepare against other threats besides terrorists? Maybe we should be concerned about other problems as well. The average American household emits about 55,000 pounds of carbon dioxide a year, according to a coalition of environmental groups, including one run by Gore. The bad news, Gore says, is the ocean absorbs only half of our man-made carbon dioxide. He says this makes the water more acidic and endangers life. That's not all, Gore points out. Global sea levels are expected to rise more than 20 inches by 2050. When it comes to energy consumption, New Yorkers are not doing that badly. In New York, we consume only about 40% of the national average per capita. So that's an interesting number. So it's actually one of the most energy efficient cities in the world. We use very little, really, for transportation. Only 12.5% of our total energy use compared to almost 30% nationally. Sanjoy Banerjee is an energy expert who teaches at the City University of New York. He says New York is doing better than any other American city in regards to meeting Gore's challenge. Professor George Hendry at the School of Earth and Environmental Sciences at Queens College says it's you and I who are responsible for the carbon emissions. New York City is not a heavy industry city. It's all of us citizens uh, doing the things we do particularly trying to stay warm in uh, well-illuminated houses. That's where most of New York City's energy is used. It's used within buildings. How can global warming be stopped? Recycling, alternative energy, and public transportation first come to mind. Bloomberg has made energy efficiency a top priority of his administration. He has a blueprint to reduce energy consumption and to help New Yorkers become more aware of energy issues. It's in that spirit that Bloomberg proposed the controversial bag tax. But America is far behind countries in Europe. Ireland, for example, has had a plastic bag tax since 2002. It started out as 15 cents and has now more than doubled to 33 cents. Laura Height is a senior environmental associate at the New York Public Interest Research Group. She thinks a bag tax is a good idea, but fears Bloomberg's six-cent proposal is not high enough to have a major impact. He's modeling it after uh, a very successful program in Ireland. Ireland, they instituted a much higher plastic bag fee, and literally overnight, uh, the, the use of plastic bags dropped by a dramatic amount, 90-95% reduction in the use of plastic bags in Ireland. A few U.S. grocery stores don't have any alternatives to plastic bags. Customers say this Christides double bags almost everything. But not everyone is convinced global warming is man-made. Some say it's a natural phenomena. Is it man-made, though, in your view? I'm not going to solely blame all of man's activities on changes in climate because the world's weather patterns are, are cyclical, and, and over history we have seen changes there. That view has some high-visibility advocates like Glenn Beck, a TV talk show host, as in this exchange with John Coleman, founder of the Weather Channel. I found out it was bogus science. It yeah. wasn't real. The numbers had been massaged. They all have an agenda an environmental and political agenda that said, let's pile on here, we're all going to make a lot of money, we're going to get research grants, we're going to get awards, we're going to become famous. In fact, some scientists say global temperatures are actually dropping. 
And then there's John Christie, a climate scientist who argues global temperatures have risen slightly. But Christie says doomsday is nowhere near. I've often heard it said that there is a consensus of thousands of scientists on the global warming issue and that humans are causing a catastrophic change to the climate system. Well, I am one scientist and there are many that simply think that is not true. In any case, many scientists suggest the environment actually benefits from carbon dioxide. Over 32,000 scientists, mathematicians and doctors have signed an online petition refuting the dangers of global warming and suggesting the environment actually benefits from carbon dioxide. There is no convincing scientific evidence that human release of carbon dioxide, methane or other greenhouse gases is causing or will in the foreseeable future cause catastrophic heating of the Earth's atmosphere and disruption of the Earth's climate. Moreover, there is substantial scientific evidence that increases in atmospheric carbon dioxide produce many beneficial effects upon the natural plant and animal environments of the Earth. That's a lot of scientists saying carbon dioxide is good, but the official policy of the U.S. government is exactly the opposite. The U.S. Department of Energy supports 77 percent of CO2 is man-made. The rest comes from greenhouse gases. Perhaps carbon dioxide is unfairly getting a bad rap. When the sun shines, plants perform photosynthesis and convert carbon dioxide into oxygen. Carbon dioxide is essential in the environment. Kevin Ferry, a greenhouse manager at Cabbage Hill Farm in Westchester County, says we would not exist without plants. He's proud of his quality control method to ensure his plants are sweet and crunchy. We either talk to them or eat them, um, taste them, gives us a way of getting close to uh, what, what pests might be on them or, or if they have a uh, pale color or uh, taste for um, firm, you know, the texture of the, of the leaves. And what does that taste like? We're doing good. However, Ferry says it is important to maintain the balance of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and not add to it. Some experts say CO2 contributes to global warming. Guess what's a big source of the natural gas methane? Cows. One cow on average rips the equivalent of 140 two-liter soda bottles of gas a day, according to the Environmental Protection Agency. Burped methane is more difficult to collect than carbon monoxide. This results in 6 million metric tons of methane cows burp every year into the U.S. atmosphere alone. Some people say the methane produced by cows is worse for the environment than the carbon monoxide produced by all the cars in the world. Those who fear global warming say the man-made situation could ruin life on Earth. Don't throw things away. The alarm Gore has sounded has even caught the attention of kids. Ten-year-old Remy Mermelstein attended this year's Echo Fest, an environmental awareness event in New York with his twin sister Zoe. Remy says he watched Al Gore's movie with his mother. It had a lot of information about the environment. Ever since then, I've been doing things to try to help the environment. From kids all the way to the White House, President-elect Barack Obama says he knows the goal to fight climate change will not be easy. My presidency will mark a new chapter in America's leadership on climate change that will strengthen our security and create millions of new jobs in the process. Green sectors, including green-collar jobs and alternative energy, are popping up. At a recent green collar event, Ed Ott, the director of the Central Labor Council, says people need to change the way they do business. Sustainability is about a change and reorganization of the way we live and do things. Gore emphasizes the wind in North Dakota alone could produce enough energy to provide one third of the U.S.'s power. Lack of space in New York City, among other issues, has disabled New Yorkers from relying on wind as a source. In some communities in this state, Wind was very, very controversial. Going green might be the solution to fighting global warming, though we've seen it's inconvenient for some. It's not that easy being green. Perhaps Kermit the Frog says it the best. It's not easy being green. Vanita Singla for Cutie's Graduate School of Journalism. Being red or yellow or gold or something much more colorful like that. It's not that easy being green. It seems you blend in with so many other ordinary things.